Welcome back to Empire, I'm Dear Darling, and let us lead a band of exiles to their freedom and absolution. Where last time we, I don't really remember what we did, but we probably just like finished a right or something, and now we're doing something different and going to the next right. You, you, you know the drill, you, you, you've seen what we've been doing in Empire, we're doing rights, we're going from one place to another, we're continuing our journey. We probably recently had a run in with someone, oh yeah, we got this, we got Sandra, I don't know if we have, a, we don't have a scribe trial to do, so see ya Sandra. I'm not here to practice because, as you all know, I'm apparently an expert at this game. <laughs> I mean, sooner or later, we are going to find um, a right where we will lose. And I don't exactly know how that's going to be. Okay, so we went Teaser's way last time. So, Ragged Rock, the North Current, is still more passed by an old carcass of ships long gone. Rookie's box wreckage in the area and believes there could be valuables to find. Prophecy, the South Current towards the Storm Warp brims with large sea creatures. Teaser seems very eager to see the wagon head in this direction. Well, he appeased Teaser last time, so let's appease Rookie, I suppose. Why not? I don't really think either of the directions particularly matter too much in the long run. You know, you pick up a bit bit of coin here, maybe a buff or an next right. We don't need buffs. Oh, maybe we do. <laughs> At some point, we're probably going to fight like a mini boss sort of right. I'm, I'd, I'd imagine the difficulty is going to ramp up there. <clears throat> Excuse me. The remnants of a shattered fleet do little to raise the confidence of your companions, given the massive, deathless tempest. A tempest raging of Zeus Solace, seemingly for all eternity, rages to the north, not far from your position. I mean, I can't really see it. We ought to be more concerned with her spore, a storm, than in finding trinkets, green tail. Oh, relax, Jody, and let me do my job. I don't show up when you're out there keeping watch and start telling you to come off it now, do I? You interrupt me in the middle of my work no fewer than four times per day. <laughs> They're gone like this for some time before turning to you. Investigating wreckage is going to take, take time, but you may find something to show for it. Yes, uh, continue searching. Yes, why not use? Rookie re rarely is mistaken when it comes to matters of finding valuables. Jodario is correct in that your focus ought to be on finding passage to your destination. Um, uh, yeah, why not? Let's, let's have a little look. You suggest it might be maybe worthwhile to continue searching through the wreckage. After having come this far, Rookie grins wide. You can see it my way, sister. Now let's see what we can get. After an exhaustive search. Uh, sorry, sister. I think I was just chasing a refraction of the sun or something. There's nothing down here. Oh, well. We already came out this way, so you know, it's not like, um, why not? <laughs> Gambit's fallacy and all that. Jodario fumes at all of this, but says nothing. I apologise, Jodario lost one hope for the next right. Oh, well, we we selected wrong, it turns out. That's fine, Jodario already gets, um... Not, not evaporated, banished. Anyway, during the right, so we'll be fine, probably. Is this the next location? You and your companions look up on the Deathless Tempest. The stars demand you sail beyond it, yet the very thought is beyond reason. Then, something in the nearby water stirs, and from it springs something familiar. It's Sir Gilman! Hold, good ladies and good sirs! This knight beseeches you to hear him, if you please. Are you going to join our team? What is it now, Worm? The rights are ended. We have no further need of you. Oh, but you do! And in turn, this knight has further need of you, good lady. Out with it, then. Let us be joined! Let this knight join you, please. Ah! He's going to join! Can you believe this, Hedwin? Uh, not really, no. Nay, look, nay, look ye not surprised. Your valour of rights did stir this poor knight's soul. He swears to you upon his long lost honour as would be knight errant of a sea dominion that he shall serve you to the end. What about your other worm friends back there? Um, the pie hearts? They are base cowards! <laughs> I just noticed this is his mouth, it's not like um his eyes sort of squinting a little bit. This knight can no longer abide by such spineless characters, having witnessed true glory in our clash upon the Hulk of Oars. Never before have we been tramped so thoroughly. I mean, you did stop to have a fight in the middle of a variety, if I recall. <laughs> and furthermore, this knight shall aid your passage through the Deathless Tempest. Is it not so that you speak passage to the north? With this knight's aid, you shall achieve your wish. Sir Gilman continues to pers persuade you for quite some time. He seems to know a way to cross the storm. Some sort of long-held secret among worms exiled to his forces. Yeah, why not? Join us. Jodario puts re pulls the rest of you aside after Hedwin gives her a look. Are you most so sure that Sandalwood would want this thing along? <laughs> Mostly sure. Sandalwood wants someone for each mask, and this one seems about as good as we're going to get. Jodario glares back at the worm. He tries his best to look presentable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> why is he facing this way instead of actually looking at us? Hedwin is more gracious. He tells Sir Gilman that if he promises to help you cross the Deathless Tempest, then he can come along, for now. <laughs> more yesterday! This knight is overjoyed, and he hereby swears to see you pass the storm. For first, this knight requires your consent. Give unto this knight your blessings in the name of the Nightwings, and thus shall he go forth. 
Sir Gilman seems to be asking your permission for something? Beg pardon. <laughs> it's not clear to you as exactly what Sir Gilman intends for you to do right now. Tentatively agree to whatever he's asking so you can get on with it. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Hope he hasn't tricked us or anything. As you begin to say something in response, Sir Gilman cries out in triumph. He vanishes into the depths. Yet through this close encounter with him, you cling to some sense of where he is going and what he intends to do. Helps, helps see his mission through. Sir Gilman is determined to help you cross the deathless tempest. Oh, okay. Oh, so we've got a tutorial with him, I assume. Just like we did with May and her thing, except for we actually fought with May first, I think, beforehand, didn't we? Sorry, having sips of water. Because I am thirsty and my throat is feeling rasp, as always. Determined to prove himself to you and the Nightwings, Sir Gilman emerges somewhere in the outer reaches of Sea of Solace and calls out to you. Master Reader, if you hear, can hear this knight, then he implores you now. Lend him your guidance. This knight's objective ought be not far east of here. Today, we shall bring peace to the embroiled sea. No, however, but among this knight's brethren, the actions we are about to take are highly forbidden. <laughs> but they are highly just. Fair enough. But Sir Gilman sets forth to quell the storm that rages to the north. I traverse a reef. Jump. Okay, so he's... What the heck was... What? So we jump like this. Slash! Whoa! What was that? Oh! He slashes all along his trail. That's... That's awesome. Whee! He's got quite a nice jump as well. So he's going to be a rookie-like attacker, I think. Huck! Yonder lie the foul spawn of unfathomed plans. The sea titan, once slain by scribe under King Oars, had brutalised dormant in the sea. Tales of her monstrosity long spread across the world. The Booker writes... Boiling the seas with a raft, exiled worms within these waters long have harboured these abominations, using them to bar passage through the downsized channels for any save this knight's own kind. Be gone from now from here, fiends! This knight shall finish what the Underking Oars, seventh of the ape scribes of a book of rites known as a preserving of a sea sojourner. Sea sojourner, I, I feel like we heard it before, right? Excuse me, Mouse, where'd you go? The legendary leader of the Worms Undersea Crusades sought to reach the edge of the abyss. So, further in, I suppose, um, reinforcing the idea of each of, uh, each of um, the scribes um, pertaining to one of our party members started. Banish for foul spawn. So, if we sprint, it does go a little bit faster, does it? We need to slash to the end of Gilman's trail. What's the point of doing it if we. Um, Of just driving over them <laughs> does exactly what we need to do. It is quite fun though, not gonna lie. Banisher, foul spawn. So does he not have any aura, or is this just because we're not in a, a game? Oh, hello. Wait, there's three of you now. <laughs> oh, they're right there, you, you, you traitor slug. How oh, dare you turn your back on this knight to your superior? Superior by rank no longer, for we no longer serve the Commonwealth. Last of this knight checked. Here you hold no sway over this knight. Ah, and what have you done to the spawn? I mean, no honour left at all. This knight has done that which required doing. His honour cannot sink much lower anyhow. He figured this would be an ideal time to free himself from servitude to you. What well, are you? You dare to staunch the tempest for those knight wings? Good sir, Deluge. Deluge, sorry. This knight was born to dare. Now come and fight this knight, if you so dare, as well. Ah, pie hearts. Apparently we never heard, hovered over this. A triumvirate of worm knights who perceive the right says, Great battles to be won, led by the worm, Sir Deluge. De Deluge. Banish him! This is an order! Alright. Banish a pirate hearts. How many y'all got? Oh. Y you see, Gilman? You shall ever be inferior, even among the weakest of our kind. G -G Gilman? Where'd you go? G Gilman? Gilman? But Sir Gilman's banishment served as a perfect ruse for him to elude his adversaries and return to his newfound allies. Oh. Alright. That's the first time we actually failed one of these tasks, I think. This knight would say it was an honour serving you, say, Deluge, but that would be a bold-faced lie, and yet another stain upon his blackened reputation. Until we meet again! I wonder if we get something um, bonus for actually completing that. Um, but, you know, if there's any time to fail, I suppose in the tutorial is not a bad way. Oh, hey, you lowly traitor! This knight will have your head, Gilman! It's a bit of a weird, a weird way to banish things with him. Um, him. I feel like it's less of a banish and more like of a oops I messed up time to you know peace out out of here <laughs> sort of situation isn't it because to banish him you have to run up to him and then press it anyway <laughs> which would just send you backwards so I think it's more like a get out of jail free card 
As the day wears on, there's still no sign of a worm kit knight. Your companions grow restless, but then... Hail! This knight returns with newfound tales to tell, and new scars to show for them. Sir Gilman is stopping wet and visibly shaken. He struggles to maintain his decorum. He is, in short, the very image of a worm knight. And more importantly, he is a very model of a modern major worm knight. But little Tempest ought no longer pose a threat for now. Behold! As if on cue, the deathless Tempest begins to simmer and subside. Lovely. Thank you very kindly, Sir Gilman. And loving. Lovingly, heavenly choirs sing from above. <laughs> Would you look at that? He really did it. Of course this knight did it. Now, if it would be alright with you, this knight could really use some shut-eye. Alright, so I guess we don't use you in the next thing. The one knight then collapses in exhaustion. You and Hedwin help him up. <laughs> a deal is a deal, Sir Gilman. Welcome to the Night Wings. Huzzah! <laughs> He's so cute! Sir Gilman joined the group. He has also revealed a path north to you. Bid him a welcome. That would be cool if, um, Zephyr's Temple, you have not been to this region of the downside. Sir Gilman revealed a gap in the storm that seems safe to enough to traverse. If, um, the fact that I lost that that thing didn't banish everyone, will actually have effects. Like the fact I I can't use him in the next right because um because I lost the tutorial or something or I don't know. Actually now I think about it, didn't I fail May's tutorial as well? Because I couldn't I couldn't do the perfect time jump or whatever. <laughs> with Sir Gilman's aid you ma oh wait, with Sir Gilman's aid you managed to breach the tempest. You were true to your word, worm. I shall give you that. But now what? We're stranded in this cursed storm. A most excellent question, and from one most fair. Call me that once more, and I shall tie you in a knot. Ah, and from one most spirited as well. This knight was wise to side with ye. Just, where do we turn from here? Answer the question, now. Sir Gilman does no such thing, although eventually he does make note of a specific current that should lead you to the lands beyond. Alright. If I may, I can corroborate Sir Gilman's account. We are close to making landfall. Then, let me be the first to say, uh, let's go. You have a verge of sailing across the Sea of Solace, voyage onwards. Um. Sayer, oh, Sayer, Tarek? Yeah. Aye, Ruki, what is it? That loot you're always carrying around. You know how to play that thing, don't you? Uh. Why, I suppose I do. Good, because I was thinking it's a little gloomy over here. We could use a little tune to, to lighten up the mood, know what I mean? Aye, let, then let me see what I can do. <laughs> Ooh. 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 I like this. Black Basin, you've not been to his region of a downside. Sir Gilman claims the downside northern landmass should be just beyond these waters. Till the water's high? There's a very slow boat. Ooh. Love the song, though. He's got a very nice song, um, not song, voice. I mean, nice song as well. <laughs> like we're both just vibing out with a song as well. I assume that's what it was doing. Lands of a light. That blue shining light from above just, you know, evaporated in some thin air. Apparently I like the word evaporated quite a lot. Ooh, pretty. Black basin, it's a magma basin, it seems. And other people live here. Look, there's houses or something to write, or nests. Hmm. Are these more of um, the snake people? At last your wagon rumbles onto solid jagged ground, the land called Black Basin. Your fellow exiles unpack the wagon so you can take stock of how best to reach your destination. Survey the surroundings. Or, look into our house. So this is Sir Gilman's thing. Sir Gilman's Crest. Official certification of a knight in the Commonwealth, oft sought by worm knights. Sir Gilman's status nearby. Hello. He approached Sir Gilman, who, have, who must have just finished practicing his fencing manoeuvres. He regards you with a single eye. Hail, the Master Reader! This knight is determined to train harder, having joined the famous Knight Wings. He shall ensure that this triumvirate continues to live up to the most feared reputation. This is such an honour! <laughs> and this knight has a great deal of honour to regain. Having fled the Pyre Knights, this knight fully expects now to conduct her rites in a most honourable fashion, to the fullest letter of a law described within the books. So he's basically our Rukio alternative, is how I'm probably going to use him. Some triumvirates this knight has met, and perchance mentioned by name, they're inclined to bend the rules, a bit, sometimes a lot, and to prevail by any means they can. 
but this is wrong. <laughs> the exile who refuses to obey the rules, as they were written by the under King Oars and his seven friend, friends, friends deserve neither his honor nor his freedom. Thusly, does the knight have confidence that Master Reader shall resist any temptations to conduct, to conduct the rites in any underhanded fashion? I wouldn't dream of it, Sir Gilman. Now then, the knight must undergo a thorough cleansing, having trained upon until the point of foulness, so please excuse him, Master Reader. I wonder if that's actually an opportunity we'll get like a moral choice later down the line. He's never up humming some sort of chivalrous t tune. Anything, Sandra? Anything, Sandra? Ask what's on her mind. What's on your mind? So then, we are back in solid land, or something like it. Hmm. Then this must be the Black Basin. Black glass searing vapor and strangling forests mark the forsaken land that loom across the sea. The eight scribes first discover the northern landmass of the downside. Flames and noxious fumes on one side, suffocating forest on the other. Lovely, lovely place. So good of you to take me here. You truly would pursue those blasted stars until the farthest corners of this land, it seems. Though I'd better cease my blasphemy, whereas the scribes themselves just might descend from up on high and strike me with another much-deserved penalty. The threat of such transgressions, reader, sometimes it keeps me going, not with any real choice. Now, we are best, we are best get to the back to our normal business, as it were. I wonder if Sandra or Sandra will join our team. Take care of yourself, then. Don't think we have anything to do. If you look at Sir Giltman, he's glorious 15. How does he compare to Rookie? 15, 19, 4, 25. 15, 26, 6, 17. So he's got a lot less hope, but he's very quick and a slightly bigger aura. Uh, Sir Gilman, the honor seeker. He is once proud knight of a sea dominion on a self made quest to regain his honor. Right power slash detonates his aura child and snaps back to its end. Leaps high enough to evade adversaries' auras, searches forward at high speed. Race, worm. Rel relatively intelligent amphibians, known for their chivalry, hot tempers, and reckless determination. Oh, amphibians, I didn't know that. It was inevitable that the Sea Dominion's teeming masses clambered onto shore, seeking glory. Past occupation, worm knight. The, ti the title knight means nothing in the Commonwealth, but means a lot to worms. Those who clambered from the depths found a wedding new employee in the Commonwealth, and we don't know any of this other stuff. One of the outlandish worm knights of Sea Dominion, he appears to have withstood many battles in the name of the Commonwealth, which employs many of his kind for an ongoing war against high wing remnants. His exile seems to be self imposed, though even he can only take so much abuse from his fellow knights. So we can't see his other things. He's very far behind in XP. So we're probably going to be taking. Okay, we're taking him, Rookie, and Headwind. But everyone's going to be gaining inspiration now, because now we've got six, so we're basically alternating between teams of three. May, Tiso, Joe Dario, and then Hedwin, Rookie, Sir Gilman. I feel like Hedwin's Rookie, Sir, Sir Gilman's a little bit too offensively minded, but I don't want to um, lose out on the inspiration buff. So, you know, <laughs> I guess those are the two teams we're going to stick with until, you know, we can't. And honestly, I, I do think inspiration might stack. There might be like building up inspiration. I, I, I don't really know. So everyone can get sort of leveled equally, but... We'll, we'll, we'll worry about that when we get seven people. Survey the surroundings. There's no clear path off the cliffs. You'll need to use what time you have to make one. All right. You find that Hedwin has asked several volunteers to scout the area and report back. All right, everyone. Uh, don't go too far. Let's meet back by dusk. Please, you caution. The exiles dwell in the and these lands are, well, rather territorial. <laughs> For your part, you remain with a black dragon to keep watch. You see occasional dark shapes soaring across the sky, but none of them draw near enough to, to see, for you to see in any detail. Dragons? Eventually, your companions make their way back, and everyone arrives as planned, or earlier. Hi, everyone. I'm back. I have come back. May returns on the east with little to report, save a word about the glowing molten rock there is very, very hot. The knight yet lives, although he is little else to report. The newest member of the group, Sir Gilman, returns from Northern Pass, visibly shaken. He appears to have discovered an intense fear of heights. Oh, Sir Gilman. <coughs> Tiso wonders whether any species of fish live in the pools or rock nearby. I can't imagine so. The little imp Tiso seems disappointed to have left the water behind. He remains with you near to the wagon. Aww. There is a western pass that seems traversable. If we travel by the light of dawn, the shadows and the crags may well cover our advance against whom never may be watching. Begging your pardon, I do not wish to contradict your strategy, madame. Though, in my experience, we shall not remain hidden for long during the climb towards the Nesta Trieste. Nesta Trieste, according to the stars, the next rite shall soon be commencing here. The exiled harp matriarch lived in solitude among these very cliffs. Harp matriarch, like harpy. The exiles of the high wing remnants, you may not have no love for them, inherently. 
but they have no such qualms with me. For now, I may be able to negotiate safe passage. Negotiate with them? <laughs> and Hedwin steps in as a lone minstrel bows and backs away. Hey, let's not decide on this just yet. We're not going anywhere right now. That much we can agree on. We'll decide how best to go Go ahead come morning. For now, let's take rest of the afternoon and get our bearings. Jotario glares at the sky as everyone else disperses. You have the rest of the day to practice your vocations. Use well your time. How about a little bit of a global buff to everyone? A mentor companion. Actually, that, that could be a good way to get your, um, not Joe Dario. Uh, what's the name? Sir Gilman up to speed. Uh, we're not going to do, to be honest, but we're going to, well, hold on. First, look at our, uh, our caravan. No one's here to talk to, so it doesn't really matter. We are instead going to study in private. And what we can increase. You like it's a secluded area nearby where you should be able to read a book of rights. Very good. And yeah, yeah. Okay, I think we max out quickness. Bigger aura size. I think we do quickness, hope, hope, presence. And then we do glory when we can. But let's do quickness first. They closely compose the book. Their influence and their experience spread through the pages into a winning reader's deepest consciousness. Inspiration comes to you in a flash, whether from a book or from within, you cannot tell. You gained a celebrity. All knights gain plus two quickness. Nice. It's a, only a small boon, but a boon nonetheless. And just to check, no one else doing anything? Running with centrifuge, looking at the book's pictures. The book's pictures. But you're not here, we can't see you. Braiding her hair. Feeding the imps. Feed the imps. Soliciting practice partners. And talking to the scribes. I keep thinking worm golf. When do we get this? I don't remember getting this. Is that something at Tizo Court, I think? But Path to Freedom beckons you to press on. Continue your journey. And now we have to make a decision of which way we should particularly go. So either the high road to Vanessa Trieste is patrolled by the Commonwealth's ancient enemies. Um, but Lucy can negotiate safe passage with a harp survivor's path. That sounds fun. Jodario wishes to avoid all paths by staying on low ground. Nah, I'm a people person. Let's go. Let's negotiate. <laughs> We're to we're to socialise and talk to people. Why avoid them? They're going to think we're, we've got untoward actions. Show yourselves, you frightened little birds! All day long, wind shadows cross the sun. You're being watched. Jodai is very unhappy about it. The lone mentor now attempts to calm her. Perhaps I can communicate with them. Please believe me, madam, when I say your enmity towards the harps had best be held in check here. So, Jodai certainly seems like she's got some sort of history with the harps themselves. A wing race known as a highway remnant, at war with the, with the Commonwealth. They are as coarse as the feathers. They hold themselves superior to the Arc Justice Androbeles the Ninth. Jodario looks at him with fury in her eyes, yet he retains his calm demeanour. Soon he grants it, soon she grants his request with a silent gesture. Then he calls towards the heavens. Good sisters, we are humble travellers, such as you and beg your leave. We journey to by the sea and seek safe passage through your lands. We shall not disturb your hunting or your nests. The request is met with nothing but silence. You search in vain for any indication of acknowledgement. Oh, hello. Maybe you'll be one of like, the future people who join our party. Then without notice, one of them appears. She swoops a minstrel up and out of sight before Joe Dario can respond. Damnation! Wait here, I shall go find him. We're probably going to go negotiate. For a long, terrible moment, you are alone with your panic. Soon, however, a lone minstrel returns, and with a sound of flapping winds, uh, wings, he dusts his cloak and calls out towards him. We thank you for your hospitality, good sisters. We shall be on our way. Having seen this, Jodario returns sullen. The exiles of Highway Remnants are letting you pass for now. It seems they are having some dispute within our ranks. I wish no further troubles all the time. It's a warning, one that leaves Jodario fuming. Minus four hope for the next right. Well, luckily we're not using you for the next right, I, I believe. We're using Hedwin, Rookie, and um, Sir Gilman, aren't we? So that is perfectly fine by me. Oh wait, hold on. Maybe that carries over until the next right she participates in. So the fact we don't use her the next right doesn't actually matter. I don't actually know. Sorry, just a little sip of water. Apologies for that. A little bit of a pause, but I'm back now. At last you arrive at Vanessa Trieste, where the next right is soon to commence. You cannot shake a feeling that unseen eyes watch your wagon's ascent, remaining watching now. I don't know if that's good or bad. Um, hello, shopkeep. Page revealed a hunt for myrrh. Oh, hey guys, what brings you out here? No, wait, don't tell me. I don't want to know. All I want is you to get the best deals in the downside. What is that? Um, Righteous fame. After dousing your adversary's pirate, the bearer's pirate is restored up to five. That sounds really good. That sounds incredibly good. 
After an adversary is banished, the bearer takes... Any adversary is banished by the bearer takes longer to return by one second. I kind of want to buy this. This seems good. Um, this seems like something good to have later on. Um, oh, that, that's just Stardust. Wait, what? Pinch. Oh, plus two. I didn't realise they, they were different ones. Well, this one's so cheap. This is four, co four coin. That's a bargain to pick it up, seeing as they're normally 15. Um, but this one seems really good. <laughs> in my opinion. I suppose now we should, um, figure out who's going to be taking what. So we'll put you, pop, pop these things down for now. Um, so we're, we're taking you, which we're going to grant you. Uh, well, Rookie's obviously going to have Rookie's thing. Um, so Gilman, why don't you take... Oh, so Gilman's thing is very annoying, though, to actually banish people, but you'll take the gold contract, I think. And you can take... Does it have to be you who douses the pyre? Bottled enchantment seems to emit high-pitched musical tones. I, I assume so. I, I assume it doesn't work with the entire team. Because it just says after dousing the adversary's pyre. Okay, well, we'll test it out. I don't think it's going to work. Like, if Rookie douses the pyre, we're going to get health um, regenerated. But I feel like we might as well try it. Oh, hold on, yeah. We got we got a new passage in the book. For something's on Mer. The hunt for Mer. In the words of Gold Graf... Got a fan Fanian, the Master General. My Emperor lay there, bleeding alone, stranded in a bitter land beyond the river. With fleeting consciousness, he understood the folly of his quest, and the folly of his rule over his country. Thus did he await the last embrace. It was an imp, Hobe, that nursed him back to health, and warned him often of the dangers he would have to face. Many enemies of Myrrh would come in search for him, some under employment by the rope corder, some long longingly opened with a cold, un uncomplicated vengeance. I was one of them. I plunged into the river willingly. We needed to be sure that he was dead. My word. The hunt for Mer. I don't even remember who Mer is, I'm gonna be perfectly honest, but it's neither here nor there as we commence a trial. You and your fellow exiles gather gather on the blasted lands of a nest of Trieste, expecting the imminent commencement of a rites. You see no sign of any adversaries, but when you hear a wishing sound from above, are we fighting harpies? Winged women. This then is what passes over night wings now. Such as maybe I should give you a bad voice. Such as rabble? <laughs> Not even dressed for the occasion. Yet it seems the scribes have a little pride in their tradition. Hold your tongue, little bird. We have not come for talk. No, you have come on the behalf of your commonwealth. Mark my words, you haunted filth. When at last we free ourselves, your home shall burn. What the heck? That's rude. Well, that the harp sweeps off as Jodario glowers after her. It's only then you realise another harp has come. She is quite serious, I assure you. I can help you sort her out. It's in our mutual interest. What? You know naught of my interest. <laughs> Let's give us another shot. Hi, my name's Pamifa Fane. She seems to be one of the winged harps of highway remnants now bound in exile. The surly one back there, that was my blood sister. No need to judge her harshly though. We've only just we've only met just now, though I must say, something about you reminds me of her. How dare you implicate that I have anything in common with your rilk. Just then Hedwin shows up to intervene. He whispers something to Jodario. No, Hedwin, you cannot be serious. Jody, I'm asking you to trust me on this one. Am I perhaps interrupting something? Say, by the by, how did you make it all the way over, all this way across the sea? Didn't see you fly in. Trust is something I'm loath to give away, Hedwin. But you've set our course thus far, and I've followed. So do as you must. That Sandalwood had better give an explanation for all this. Are you another party member? So soon? Jodario storms up her head when turns to you. What's your take on this one, my friend? Our informant wants someone for each mask. I hadn't expected we'd run into a harp, yet here she is. What are you getting from her? You turn your attention to Pamifo, who's been watching with bemused interest. Ah, uh, a reader, are you? Pleasure to make your acquaintance, darling. Well, here I am. Gaze intently all you like, and tell your comrade that they're the truth of it, why don't you? You sense that she's conflicted about something, but you do not know what. You also sense, however, that her motives here and now are earnest. Ooh, earnest... Hedon wants to know your initial impressions. She seems alright. You're willing to take Pamifa a word and see her potential for a valuable new ally. Express your reservations. Maybe that her maybe that her training gives her some resistance to your scrutiny. Having only met her, you cannot sense whether to trust her and defer to Hedwin. Yeah, sure, why not? I don't know. I'm a trusting person. You tell Hedwin that you 
You think the group should take its chance with Pamifa and te take her at her word? My thoughts as well, and I think and hope Jodara will come around. He then turns to Pamifa. I'm Hedwin. We'll accept your offer on two conditions if you hear me out. Conditions? Why, sure, I love a good condition or two. First, after we're finished here tonight, you come along and make sure that your blood sister and her friends don't give us any trouble when we're headed out. Second, you have to find a way to get along with Jodario, whom you met earlier. I'm really in. I had no plans to stick around here anyway. As for your demon friend, no doubt we'll get on famously. Now, I don't suppose you have an extra set of arrangements I could use, because I think you're right, it's getting started. You look up and see that she's right. She's got a cool mask, I just noticed. Bid her welcome. Sure. Pamifa Fain joined you. She has a score to settle. She's one of a winged heart. So, is she a temporary party member? Or is she one here permanently? And I'm, I'm not really sure I understand, to be honest, but... I suppose if a mask and raiments fit her, then according to Sandalwood, a party member she must be. Probably. I didn't expect to get two so soon. I feel like you said this at the beginning of every right mysterious voice. <laughs> I'm just very good at navigating. But with two? Oh, it's been half an hour. Maybe I shouldn't have started this battle yet. Oh well. Mm. I'm sure this won't go poorly. Winged terrors. You got a very interesting logo there. I don't know, maybe. From a distance, you observe as Pamifa, now clad in Nightwing's raiments, heads towards your adversaries in the rights. You, what sort of heathen harp would you dare take? Would there? What sort of heathen harp would dare take wing against us? Your new companion then loses her bindings on her mask. Hello there, Tamifa. She's one of the winged harps in the Highwing remnants now bound in exile. Pamifa's blood sister stares back at her a while before responding. Oh my word. One of the saints' name are you doing here with them? Saint Trester Tiffus. Fifth of the eight scribes of the Book of Rites, known as the Disciplined of a Blessed Born, the eldest of a harp of matriarchs, she anointed the Book of Rites and gave its word their power. Doubtless come to dig your talons in my back again. No, sister. I've come to have a word with you. Save it. I cannot help but share your poison blood. But I shan't ever count you as my sister. You expect oh, is she maybe she's like, um, a half, a half, what have we got, a half, half harp or something. You expect me to believe that you came all this way for talk? You waste your time as ever. What's life if not a waste of time, dear sister? Give me a chance, why don't you? What do you even have to lose anymore? Besides, I've come a long way. Silence, you shan't have come here. And the time for talk has long since passed. If only you could see yourself again consorting with my enemies. Fine then, save her their defeat. But I warn you, stay away from me. Pamifa says nothing more as her blood sister turns away again. Ah, I, I feel like we have to cut this episode here. I'm, I'm sorry for such an awkward timing, but it's like... Um, I do have a, a character selection screen, but like... <laughs> it's going to run on way too long, I think, otherwise. Pamifa gets your attention. Listen to me, Arita, darling. The rest of you are ill-equipped to navigate this place. Let me conduct this right on your behalf, and my wings will bring you victory. Dear lady, your words ring true, and it is flattered that you have not eaten him as, in, as a tendency among your kind. This night here by volunteers is posting the triumvirate for thee. So Gilman refuses to participate in the night this night so that Pamifa can face her sister. Oh, okay. Alright. I mean, we, we could have had both of you and someone else. You observe a treacherous terrain. Pamifa should be better suited to rights here than the rest of you. I guess. But we are going to select next time. So for now, if you have been um, watching, this has been Pyre. I've been dear darling. Any likes, comments, subscriptions, shares are greatly appreciated. But for now, it's our farewell. So until next time. Bye-bye for now.